ನಮಗೆಲ್ಲ ತಿಳಿದಂತೆ ಭಾರತ ದೇಶ ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ತು ನೂರ ನಲವತ್ತೇಳು ಆಗಸ್ಟ್ ಹದಿನೈದರಂದು ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರವಾದರೂ ಕೂಡ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ನಿಜಾಮನ ದುರಾಡಳಿತಕ್ಕೆ ಸಿಲುಕಿಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದು ಇಂದಿನ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ವರಂಗಲ್ ಬೀದರ್ ಗುಲ್ಬರ್ಗ ರಾಯಚೂರ್ ಮತ್ತಿತರ ಭಾಗಗಳಿಗೆ ನಿಜಾಮನಿಂದ ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯ ಪಡೆದದ್ದು ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ತು ನೂರ ನಲವತ್ತೆಂಟು ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಂಬರ್ ಹದಿನೇಳರಂದು ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲವರಿಗೆ ನಿಜಾಮನ ದುರಾಚಾರ ಅದಕ್ಕೂ ಮೀರಿ ಭೀಕರವಾಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಅವನ ರಜಾಕರ ಪಡೆಯ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯ ಹಿಂಸೆ ಅವರು ಮಠ ಮಂದಿರಗಳ ಮೇಲೆ ನಡೆಸಿದ ದಾಳಿ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಹಿರಿಯರಿಂದ ಅಲ್ಪ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕೇಳಿರುತ್ತೇವೆ ಆದರೆ ಅಂದು ನಡೆದ ಸಂಘರ್ಷ ಅಂದು ಅನುಭವಿಸಿದ ನೋವು ರಜಾಕರು ನಡೆಸಿದ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಸರಿಯಾದ ರೀತಿ ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ಪ್ರತಿರೋಧ ವಡ್ಡಿ ರಜಾಕರನ್ನು ಸೆಡ್ಡು ಹೊಡೆದು ನಿಜಾಮನ ತಲೆ ಬಾಗಿಸುವಂತೆ ಮಾಡಿದ ಭಾರತದ ಮೊದಲನೇ ಗೃಹ ಮಂತ್ರಿ ಉಕ್ಕಿನ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಎಂದೇ ಖ್ಯಾತಿ ಪಡೆದಿರುವ ಸರ್ದಾರ್ ವಲ್ಲಭಾಯಿ ಪಟೇಲ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಇನ್ನೋರ್ವ ಮಹಾನ್ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೆ ಎಂ ಮುನ್ಸಿ ಇವರುಗಳ ಧೈರ್ಯ ಪರಿಶ್ರಮದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾವು ಪಠ್ಯ ಪುಸ್ತಕದಲ್ಲಾಗಲಿ ಇತರ ವೇದಿಕೆಗಳಲ್ಲಾಗಲಿ ಮಾಧ್ಯಮಗಳಲ್ಲಾಗಲಿ ನಾವು ನೋಡಿದ್ದು ತುಂಬ ಅಲ್ಪ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಬಹುಶಃ ಇಲ್ಲವೇ ಎಂದು ಹೇಳಬಹುದು ಆದರೆ ಇಂದು ನಮಗೆ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ವಿಮೋಚನೆಯ ಯಶೋಗಾಥೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲೂ ವಿಶೇಷವಾಗಿ ರಜಾಕರು ನಡೆಸಿದ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸವಿಸ್ತಾರವಾಗಿ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಕಾಜಿ ಅವರಿಂದ ಕೇಳಲಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಈಗ ಮುಖ್ಯ ವಕ್ತಾರರಾದಂತಹ ಪತ್ರಕರ್ತರು ಬರಹಗಾರರು ಸಂಶೋಧಕರು ಹಾಗೂ ವಾಗ್ಮಿಗಳು ಆಗಿರುವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಕಾ ಸುಧಾಕರ್ಜಿ ಇವರಿಂದ ಉದ್ಬೋಧನೆ ಮಾನನೀಯ ಸ್ಮಿತಾ ಸುರೇಭಾನ್ಕರ್ಜಿ ಯು ಹವ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಮೈ ಜಾಬ್ ಈಸಿಯರ್ ಬೈ ಸೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟೋನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎರುಡೈಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಪ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಪಾಚಾಪುರೇಜಿ ಲುಕ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಆರ್ಡಿನರಿ ಬಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾರ್ಡಿನರಿ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೌಂಡ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ liberation the real liberation that he talks about is the liberation of the self only when the standard of the ordinary man is increased to that level india can prosper this is what rishi aravinda said this is what swami vivekananda said our chief guest today has set the tone for the whole talk by talking about the liberation the real liberation now the first question is why should belgaum talk or even think about hyderabad liberation belgaum is after all 600 kilometers away from hyderabad and why should it talk about an incident that has happened 75 years ago roughly 74 years and it would be 75 next year why should belgaum be bothered about it why talk about hyderabad liberation in a town like in a city like belgaum the question is 126 kilometers from belgaum is a place called marmogao this is part of goa a port city how many of us know that Nizam of Hyderabad wanted to pay money and buy this Marmugao port so that he can import weapons from the western countries and wage a war against the government of India its people his own residents his own you know Hyderabadis the Telugus Kannadigas and the Marathi speaking people just 20, 126 kilometers from here Marmugao port Nizam had spent 17000 pounds in those days and gave money to a middleman called Alexander Rogers and this man was to strike a deal with the portuguese people so that they can part with the marmugao port imagine 126 kilometers from here weapons are landing from the western countries and those weapons will find their way to hyderabad but some of those weapons will find their way to places like belagavi and all these areas imagine what would have happened history is the you know uh, 
saga of ifs and buts. Had Nizam's plan succeeded, Belgaum would have had an ulcer right on top of its head, just 126 kilometers from here. That is the reason why Belgaum should also think about Hyderabad liberation. 479 kilometers from Belagavi is a place called Bidar. How many of us know that till July 1948, two months, till two months before Hyderabad was liberated, weapons from Karachi landed, flights from Karachi landed in Bidar airport and these weapons found their way into the different areas of Marathwada and Karnataka, the Hyderabad Karnataka. They were distributed among a particular community, they were distributed among the Razakas and they were distributed among the Nizam's army, police and forces. Right on our eastern side, we have an airport where airport, planes from Karachi were landing barely 470 kilometers from this place. So Belgaum also, had Nizam's plan succeeded, Belgaum would have been one of the most immediately affected region by the atrocities of Nizam. Luckily, Nizam's plan failed. In July, the, you know, the, the flights from Karachi have stopped because India has lodged a protest against the uh, Pakistan government that it is uh, providing arms and ammunition to the Nizam government. Pakistan had stopped sending plight, uh, flights. So Hyderabad, the, uh, the, the, the weaponry, the bigotry, the fundamentalist mentality, the Razakar mentality could not come travel 479 kilometers and touch the heart and soul of the people of Belagami. There was a British Australian called Sidney Cotton who managed this, you know, uh, dropping of ammunition at, Be at Bidar port. In case of Marmogov, it was Alex Rogers. In case of Bidar, it was Sydney Cotton, an Aust Australian gunrunner. So Hyderabad's liberation story is not just about Nizam and Razakars. It is also about the Western forces that are out to prepare and create an ulcer right in the belly of this country, as uh, Smitaji has very rightly pointed out. So that is the reason why Belgaon and all places in this country must know about the story of liberation of Hyderabad, because Hyderabad's liberation is an, in, is an in, you know, historic necessity. And Karnataka has played a great role in this. People really do not appreciate that uh, people do not really appreciate that there was uh, I'm sorry. I lost uh, okay. There was a, a youth called Vyankatesh Bhagwan Radas Khergi Khergikar. He, is, he was born in a place called Sindhagi in your state. And this man, this man decided that he should serve the people. Liberation of the self is important, so he became a sannyasi. As a sannyasi, he, he was given a new name and that name is Swami Ramananda Tirtha. A Kannadiga, Swami Ramananda Tirtha, a resident of Karnataka, someone who was born in Sindhagi, he waged a relentless battle against Nizam. He organized All India Hyderabad State Congress Satyagraha. And he organized Satyagraha several times and fought against the tyranny of Nizam, the bigotry of the Razakars. So Karnataka has a great role in liberating Hyderabad. Swami Ramananda Tirtha. Similarly, one of the foremost organizations that fought against the Razakars was Arya Samaj. Arya Samaj's first branch was started in a place, in a small village in Raichur district. It traveled from Raichur to Hyderabad. It is not the other way around. 
all organization gets started in the state capitals and then the branches are started in different places. But R.A. Samaj in Hyderabad state took birth in a small village in Raichur and the activists went to Hyderabad and started propagating about Arya Samad's philosophy principles and Arya Samad founded its first office in Sultan Badar area of Hyderabad city in 1892. Roughly two years, uh, one year before Vivekananda visited Belagaon. Arya Samad's message went to Hyderabad from a small village in your state. So Karnataka had played a great role in the story of liberation of Hyderabad. Unfortunately, Karnataka has also played a very divisive role in creating discord among the communities, in weakening the Hindu society, and in perpetrating the atrocities on the Hindu community of the Hyderabad state, which comprise people from Maharashtra, Karnataka, as well as Telangana nine districts of Telangana, five districts of uh, Marathwada, and three districts of Karnataka. There was a person called B. Sham Sundar. In Bidar, there is a chowk named after him. This B. Sham Sundar is the founder of the idea of Dalit Muslim unity in this country. It was he who said, Dalits and Muslims form one group and they should fight the so-called upper caste Hindus and destroy this Hinduism. And he became a minister in Nizam's government and he represented Nizam in the United States, United Nations organization and defending Nizam's right to become, stay independent. After Hyderabad was amalgamated, integrated into India, he formed a Dalit Muslim Unity Front he, became, he contested elections from uh, Bidar region and he lost for both Lok Sabha and Assembly. That's a different thing. But then even after Hyderabad's liberation, this person started what today we know as Jai Bhim, Jai Meem. The founder of Jai Bhim and Jai Meem is from Bidar. And it was he who started this slogan Jai Bhim in 1960s early 1960s and called for a unity of Dalit plus Muslim and uh, the slogan was the slogan was the same slogan that the Razakars had given Bamman ko kato baniya ko luto aapas me baato Jai Bheem Jai Meem was founded in this area so on one hand, we have a nationalistic force that worked for the liberation of Hyderabad and propagation of nationalistic ideology. On the other hand, we had forces that tried to disintegrate this society, divide this, weaken this community, and forge an alliance with the people who were perpetrators and the progeny of Razakars. Same way, in 1924, a person from a place called Gurmitkal, sorry, Gadag in 1924. His name was Sayyid Siddiq Hussain. This Sayyid Siddiq Hussain formed an organization which is known as Deendar Anjuman. He called himself a reincarnation of Channabasaveshwara. He changed his name to Deendar Channabasaveshwar Siddiq. And he started propagating the idea that he was the incarnation of Siddiq and a day will come when there will be a major Mahabharata Kurukshetra war and all the right thinking people should support the Dharma Raja. Who is the Dharma Raja? Nizamul Mulk Mir Usman Ali Khan, the, the Sultan Nawab of Hyderabad. She propagated this idea and this Dindar Channabeshweshwar Siddiq has specifically targeted the Lingayat community and tried to convert them into Islam by surreptitious means, by fraudulent means, by misleading the people. He tried to form this. So on one hand, we had a nationalistic stream of thought that is working for, the national, for, for building nationalistic thought in this part of the country. On the other hand, we had divisive forces which are out to divide the Hindu society. So who wins in this fight is very important. 
That is the reason why every region of the country, including Belagami, should know about the story of Hyderabad. Knowing about Hyderabad is very important. How is it that the people of Karnataka have forgotten the story of Narayan Rao, Bhimshan Rao, Deshpande, who has hoisted the flag, the tricolor, the proud Indian national flag, at a place called MSK Mill in Gulbarga on 1947, 15th of August. He was jailed for 40 days, but he refused to back down. And once he came out, he again hoisted the flag of India. This story is not told to our people. This has happened barely 400 kilometers from this place. In Gulbarga, two great citizens of Karnataka, Dattatreya Abaraji and Hanumantraji started Nagarika, a Kannada daily, Kannada weekly, I'm sorry, to propagate nationalistic thought and to promote fight against the Nizam's tyranny and the bigotry of Razakars. Gulbarga's Vidyadhar Guruji, Raichur's Pandit Taraknath, Pandit Bansilal and Pandit Shamlal of Halikhed, Sri Gopal Dev of Basavakalyan, Lakshman Virappa and Ramchandra Virappa of Humnabad, Lakshman Gudi of Koppal, Sharana Gauda Inamdar of uh, Raichur. These have all fought against uh, the tyranny of Nizam. The people of Belagami in 1947 and 48, they pulled up money, they raised funds, they collected rice and vegetables and sent them to the camps of the refugees that were on the border of the uh, you know, uh, Hyderabad, Karnataka. The Hindus fled from those places. They had come to you know, uh, places like uh, um, places that are on the border of uh, the Hyderabad, Karnataka region and the people of uh, uh, Belgaon, they collected rice and they collected other equipment and they went and they organized these camps. The Congress workers of this village, this town, this city, I'm sorry, this city, they have gone and they have organized refugee camps for the Hindu refugees who have come from Hyderabad. 46 refugee camps were run by people of Belagami. That is the reason why Belagami should know about the story of Hyderabad's liberation. Because it is a story that Belagami itself has forgotten. And when a country forgets its own past, it will, have, it will never have a future. It is for this reason that Belgaon should know about liberation of Hyderabad. Second point, why talk about Hyderabad's liberation 75 years after it has happened? Because we have Razakars operating all across our country even now. The Razakar mentality has not died down. The Razakars approach the Jai Bhim, Jai Meem, divide this community into different castes, creeds and communities and forge opportunistic alliances and then attack the Hindu society. This is happening all across the country. The land jihad and love jihad and all kinds of things that we hear of are happening even now. They have their roots in the Razakar mentality. Razakars as an organization were founded in 1926. But it was from 1946 that Radhakar started physical attacks on the Hindu community. In the 20 or 25 years from 1924 to 46, what happened? Many people associate with, with Radhakars with the violence that they perpetrated in 1946, 47 and 48. But when the Radhakars were founded, the express aim of it was to create an Islamic state in Hyderabad. The slogan that Radhakars gave, the Majlis Ittahadul Muslimin gave was An Al Malik. An Al Malik means I am the ruler. Every Muslim in this country was made to feel, in Hyderabad state was made to feel that he was the ruler. I am the ruler. There were no taxes for them. There were hundred kinds of taxes on the Hindu society. There were restrictions on the Hindu community's religious observances. A marriage procession cannot take place without the permission from the authorities. There was a 
rule called Gasti Nishan Tirappan, Gasti Nishan number 53. This prohibited kirtans, bhajans, religious processions, wedding processions, and even funeral processions. Bhajan was prohibited all across Hyderabad state. In protest, there was hundreds of secret bhajan societies all across you know, Hyderabad state that includes Telangana, Marathwada, and Karnataka. This uh, Razakar started, they had a threefold aim. One, to increase the number of Muslims, to increase the number of Muslims, bring Muslims from the rest of the country. Nizam ul Mulk writes a letter to Kashmir's National Conference leader, Sheikh Abdullah, asking him to send the Uyghur refugees who have fled from Xinjiang province of China and have entered the Ladakh region. He asked Sheikh Abdullah to send all of them to Hyderabad city so that they can be provided, rehabilitated, and they can be you know, uh, provided with jobs and everything. What is the aim? Why should Uyghurs from Central Asia come all the way down to South India to increase the number of Muslims in this country, Al Al Malik. He asked all the Bangladeshis, today's Bangladesh, then the East Pakistan. Those who find it difficult in Bangladesh financially, please come over to Hyderabad, we'll provide you rehabilitation so that our number increases. From October 1947, Pakistan has closed all its border gates. And the border security force that stood guard, they told the Muslims who wanted to enter into Pakistan to go to Hyderabad state so that our numbers will increase. So all those people who wanted to go to Pakistan, they came all the way to Hyderabad and they were rehabilitated here. I live in a place which is close to one such refugee camp. It is known as Maula Ali. Those people from Pakistan, those people from UP, people from Xinjiang province of today's China, and people from Bangladesh, they came and they used to be first settled in Maulali area and then they were distributed into different parts of the state, Hyderabad state. All the jobs were reserved for the Muslim community. There is a statistic. The Hindu officers at the lower level were 11%. At the higher level, they were 4%. In the military, the Hindu ratio was less than 2%. So systematically disenfranchising and disempowering a majority community by not providing them with jobs. This was another strategy. The third strategy is to promote Dindar Chandabasveshwar Siddiqui's Dindar Anjuman. And Razakas themselves used to give monthly reports of the number of people they have converted. And the target was the Dalit community. In those days, the zamindars used to enforce a system called baggery in Telangana region. Baggery is nothing but bonded labor. You go and you work and you are provided with food and nothing else. So those who become Muslims are exempt from baggery or the bonded labor, daily uh, no, bonded labor. So some of the freedom fighters families, within their families, there were people who got converted to Islam. Many of the uh, Dalits, <coughs> they got converted to Islam simply to escape from the atrocities of the Jagirdars and Jamindars and the Tahsildars. So increasing the number by immigration, it is happening even now. Bangladeshis are entering into our country, right, left and center. The government doesn't know how many Bangladeshis have entered. So that is the first strategy. Nizam started it, even now it is happening. The second thing, by disenfranchising Hindu community, disempowering Hindu community, it is happening even now. Kashmir Hindus have been thrown out. Lot of villages in West Bengal have been de-Hinduized. Lot of villages in Maharashtra, lot of towns in Maharashtra, the Hindus have fled. In my own city of Hyderabad, in the old city area, there are 18 temples where there is no daily puja. Because there are no Hindus. The Hindus have fled the place. So this is a strategy that Nizam has adopted, Radhakars have aided, Dindar Anjuman has abated. 
the same thing is happening even now even today and by increasing their population driving away the hindus is the third part of the strategy driving away the hindus from the hyderabad state do you know there were 40 refugee camps of the kannadiga hindus who have fled from the today's kalyana karnataka erstwhile hyderabad karnataka there were nearly 100 such camps in the marathwada region there were over 200 camps in the telangana region on vijayawada and then guntur and other sites other districts hindus were thrown away they were sent away they were forced out of hyderabad state there was a these atrocities, these attacks, this disenfranchisement was part of a wider plan to de-Hinduize Hyderabad. Come to think of it, Hyderabad had 85% Hindu population. The total Muslim population was around 15%, but they wanted to throw out these people. So they let loose a reign of terror. I can go on giving you a lot of examples about how Razakars used to kill people. There are umpteen examples if you go to any old gen older generation person uh, who is ab about se above 70 or 80, he has a tale of Razakar atrocity to tell. Across Karnataka, across Marathwada and across Telangana, there are hundreds of village that, villages that bore the brunt of Nizam's and Razakar's atrocities. Unfortunately for us, they have not been documented. They have not been documented. Who is responsible for this? Our own leaders were responsible for this. After Hyderabad was liberated and integrated into the Indian Union, the powers that be, the Congress rulers, they stopped talking about Razakars. The Aryasamaj leaders who fought against the Razakars and who waged a relentless battle, they were co-opted into the government and they, they became, they fell silent. They stopped talking about Razakars. In 1972, on the occasion of the 25th Silver Jubilee of India's independence, Andhra Pradesh government, then undivided Andhra Pradesh, today Andhra and Telangana are two separate states, the undivided Andhra Pradesh had brought out books on the freedom fight Freedom struggle in Hyderabad state and then um, uh, whole of Andhra Pradesh. Five volumes on Hyderabad liberation were prepared. Each had about 400 pages. Five into four, 2,000 pages of Hyderabad's liberation history, freedom struggle. It was edited by an eminent historian called Sarojini Regan, Dr. Sarojini Regani. Sarojini Regani is an authority on Nizam governance and Nizam British relations and Hyderabad's history. And the overall panel was headed by a person who fought against the Nizams, who fought against the Nizams for the right to wear a dhoti. In those days, Hyderabad, we had only one university, Usmania University, only one degree college, Nizam College. And the students who study in that university or the college, they have to wear sherwani and pyjama. So these Hindu students, they said, no, we want our right to wear dhoti. So they started agitating. They protested and they said, we will wear dhoti and they wore dhoti and they sang Vande Matram and they attended classes. They were all rusticated. Over a thousand students were rusticated. And the Vice Chancellor of this university, Usmania University, wrote letters to all the universities across the country saying that these are hooligans, unruly students, do not admit them. Only Nagpur University's Vice Chancellor had the guts to actually admit most of the students, some 300 students he admitted. And one student who fought for the right to wear dhoti and sing Vande Matram and who was rusticated by Nizam, later became the chief minister of Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh, I'm sorry, undivided Andhra Pradesh. Under his leadership, these books were written. They were approved by him. You know his name? P.V. Narsimha Rao. A freedom fighter himself, someone who fought for the right of the Hindus, and he, in those 2,000 2, pages, there is no mention of the word Razakar. 2,000 pages 
of official history by government of Andhra Pradesh, approved by an academic council led by Chief Minister himself, an erudite scholar without doubt. There is no mention of the word Radhakar. And this happened at a time when the people who were victims of Radhakar atrocities were still living. While the people were arrived, while the people who carried the memories of Radhakar atrocities were alive, the government of Andhra Pradesh chose not to write about, not to write about the Radhakars. 2,000 pages, no mention of Radhakars. So we, the, the governments that came subsequently after Hyderabad was liberated, Hyderabad got integrated into India. It was both Vilina as well as Vimochana. Vimochana for the people of Hyderabad and Vilina for the state of Hyderabad. There is no mention of the word Razakar. And Kashim Razvi was arrested in a arson case and he served six years. He was released. He was given an option to leave India within 24 hours. He was packed off to Bombay. He boarded a flight. He got into the flight. He went to Pakistan. Before leaving for Mumbai, this man organized a meeting of Majlis Ittahadul Muslimin. All the major cadres of leaders of Majlis Ittahadul Muslimin, they met. And then he asked, I am leaving for Pakistan. Who will take up the mantle of you know, Majlis Ittahadul Muslimin? None of the major leaders came forward. A young advocate by name Abdul Wahid came forward and he said, I will take up the responsibility. Then Rajvi said, Kashim Rajvi, who is the chief of the Razakars, he said, okay, for some years, work only as a voluntary agency, a service organization. Try to rehabilitate the Muslims. Try to help the Muslims who have been displaced by the police action. And only do service. Don't contest elections. Till 1969, he served. He organized service activities. And in 1969, his son, Sultan Salahuddin of YC, became the chief of Razaka, as chief of Majlis Ittadul Muslimin. His sons, Salahuddin, Akbaruddin Owaisi and Asaduddin Owaisi, the man who said that he would finish off all the Hindus in this country within 15 minutes, provided police look the other way. They are now the descendants of Mr. Abdul Wahid Owaisi, who is a descendant of Kashim Rizvi. Funny thing is, we are trying to forget Razakars. But the Razakars have not forgotten their history. Starting from 2001 to 2021, 19 books have been published by Majlis Ittadul Muslimin in English. Not directly by Majlis Ittadul Muslimin, but by supporters of Majlis Ittadul Muslimin and the relatives or the descendants of the Nizam's officials. For instance, uh, Latur was the, Us Usmanabad was the place from where Kashim Rizvi came. The district collector of uh, Usmanabad, his name was uh, Haider Mohiuddin. <coughs> Haider Mohiuddin wrote his memoirs. Those memoirs were preserved for 40, 50 years and they were published in 2001 from England. And starting from that book, there are whole lot of 18 or 19 books. Lot of research is now going on in the Western universities, European universities, American universities about what happened to the Muslims after the police action. So each year a volume of this size with bibliographic references and everything, a proper research work is being published and it is telling the story of Razakars and it is trying to portray the Indian military in bad light. They say the Indian military had raped people, pillaged, plundered. What Razakas have done has been obfuscated. And what Nizam's forces have done has been obscured. And the occasional act of omission and commission by our army soldiers are the people who have retaliated, are being highlighted, blown out of proportion. Books are being brought. One of the person who wrote books is A.G. Nurani, a legal new luminary. The name of that book is Destruction of Hyderabad. Just look at the name. 
we are talking of liberation, liberation and he is talking of destruction of Hyderabad. So 20 books, 19, 19 books have come in 21 years and each of them with annotated uh, uh, bibliography, references, everything, it looks like a proper research document. And they are trying to portray the Radhakars, the perpetrators as the victims. And this society has forgotten because our rulers have forgotten. And the memories of the, you know, um, victims of Radhakars, atrocities, have now faded. If anyone has personally faced Radhakar atrocities, he must be around 85 to 90 years. Faint memory, you know, incoherence. So they are unable to record their stories. But on the other hand, the Razakars are recording the stories of the people who have been arrested, attacked, put in jail by the Indian Army. There is a project called Oral Hyderabad History. This is run by a journalist called Yunus Lasania. And he is going to all the descendants of Razakars, descendants of the people who were, you know, in the forefront of opposing Indian military and he's trying to collect their version of the stories, how the Indian military treated them, how they were put behind bars, how their grandfather was put in jail, how their grandfather was uh, divested of his government responsibility. And he's trying to pull up that history and the oral history of Hyderabad is being prepared now. And this oral history in 10 or 15 days, to years, will become the official history. Even now, if one of your son or daughter is given a task to write a small project on Operation Polo and goes to the internet, the Google Mata, the only information you will get is the Razakar version. There is no nationalistic version, there is no patriotic version, there is no version of the atrocities committed on the Hindu population of Hyderabad. Yajyas were prohibited. There was a Marwadi freedom fighter, Arya Samajist called Radha Krishna Modani. Radha Krishna Modani defied the government, uh, you know, Nizam's restrictions and Radhakar's uh, threat and threats and then he performed homam in his market. He was done to death, he was killed, he was shot dead. The people of Nizamabad have named that Ganj market as Radha Kishan Ganj. Go to Nizambad, ask any youth today, why is this named Radha Kishan Ganj? Nobody would be able to tell you. There is another Ganj market in Nizamabad, it is known as Shraddhananda Ganj. On the day when a Hyderabadi Radhakar by name Abdul Rashid went and killed Swami Shraddhananda and Arya Samaji Sanyasi who was performing Shuddhi and bringing back lakhs of people into Hinduism, the name of the market was changed to Shraddhananda Ganj. Today nobody knows it as Shraddhananda Ganj. They simply call it Ganj. The Hindu society has forgotten. So this is the reason why we should remember the saga of Hyderabad's liberation and the story of Razakar atrocities. Recently, one of my friends who works in a Saraswati Shishu Mandir, he went to Delhi for a, for a conference. He was browsing through, you know, uh, uh, some books available there and one book caught his attention. It was about child freedom fighters. And while reading this, he suddenly, you know, his eyes got widened, you know, surprised. Why? There is a mention of a village called Shali Gauraram in Nalgonda district of Telangana. The story says, the account says that ten children hoisted India's tricolor on 15th August 1947. School going children. They were all shot dead by the Razakars. And this man was surprised because he is from the same village and he doesn't know. Shaligauraram, he is from Shaligauraram which is in Nalgonda. He doesn't know that this has happened in his own village. He bought the book, purchased the book, he came back to his village and he went house to house and started asking people, do you know that 10 children were marked in our village for hoisting the tricolor? None in the village knew about it. He tried it for three days and he was almost about to give up. Then he thought of a 92-year-old man. He went to that man and he asked him, 
Tata, do you know that 10 children were killed in our village just for hoisting Indian tricolor and Razakas killed them? And that old man luckily, he said, yes, I know. I remember. Do you know the names of the boys? He said, yes, I know the names of the boys. He recounted the he, names of the boys. And the names were matching with the names that were there in the book. And he said, do you know where they were buried? He said, I know where they were buried. He took them to the government school there and he, they scratched the earths and they found ten small stones. They said, this is the place they were buried. Then they went, he said, this man is the great grandfather of uh, so and so. He is the great grandfather of such and such person. So they went to all these people and asked them, do you know that one person in your family was killed brutally by the Razakas? They had no memory. Then the surnames matched and then the, this old man said that your great grandfather was killed, your um, you know, uncle was killed, so on and so forth. Then they organized a meeting in the village. The whole of the village turned up and they felicitated this 92 year old man because he was living to tell the story. He, was, he survived to tell the story. Had it not been for him, this whole story of 10 children being killed in a village in Nalgonda district would have been completely gone forever. Because there is no account of it. We are adept in forgetting history. So now all political leaders are flocking to the village. They are now trying to con uh, construct a memorial. There is a competition to construct a memorial. The Congress wants to construct a big memorial. BJP wants to construct a bigger memorial. And the Telangana Rashtra Samiti wants to construct a you know, biggest of all. But the story of uh, Shali Gauraram has been forgotten. And here, oral histories of Hyderabad is collecting the stories of the people who have been arrested by Radhakas and portraying them as the victims. So we have a responsibility of understanding Hyderabad's history because the history that has happened in Hyderabad can happen anywhere in this country. It has happened in Kashmir right in front of our eyes. It is going to happen in old city of Hyderabad. Old city of Hyderabad till 1983 had a Hindu MP. Hyderabad is the unique uh, city in the country where the Hindu dominated Sikandrabad returned a Muslim MP, M.M. Hashim. And the Muslim dominated Hyderabad returned a Hindu MP till 1983. When the Razakars bared their fangs and the communal rights started in Hyderabad starting from 1983, the whole bigotry returned, the Razakar atrocities returned, the Hindus started running away. As I told you uh, moments before, 18 temples in Hyderabad city. We are talking about the Marthan temple, Shiv Khori temple or uh, Buddha Amarnath in Kashmir. Right in front of, uh, 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 right in Hyderabad, there are 18 temples where, are, where there are no devotees. There is a very famous bhajan. The bhajan says, Mandir suna ek devo bina, devo suna ek bhakta bina. There are no bhaktas, so there is no worship in 18 temples. Because the Hindu population has been denuded, they have been thrown out of that area. I visited two or three such temples. I have a list of 18 temples, but two or three temples I visited recently. The Pujari was covering with fear, waiting for me. He, keep, he kept calling me, Sudhakar ji, aja ye, jaldi aja ye, jaldi aja ye, mujhe mandir band karna hai. I asked, what is the problem? He said, I am coming, but then what is the problem? He said, Bacche cricket khel rahe hai. Agar hum ghanta bajayenge, to cricket bat se mujhe peetenge. I am telling you the story of Hyderabad 2022, not of the Razaka era, not of the 1948 Razaka atrocities. So, the Razaka story is happening right in front of our eyes. That is the reason why we must know about this story. <coughs> story of Hyderabad's liberation. Unless we know our history, we will not be in a position to remedy the situation, rectify the situation. Unless we pass on this story to our next generation and tell them what has happened in Hyderabad, what has happened in, in Bidar, Gulbarga, Raichur, Gota, 
in Basava Kalyan, 300 houses were set on fire. If you go to Gota in Basava Kalyan, you will be able to see the 300 houses that have been burnt. Their remnants are still there in that village. Not a single memorial for the 300 souls that have departed because of the Radhakar atrocities. This collective amnesia of the Hindu society must go. This collective amnesia of the Hindu society must go and we should talk about Radhakar's story. We should talk about how Hyderabad was liberated. How Hyderabad had the temerity to stay independent. And it had got the support of 15 countries. They were ready to recognize Nizam's you know, Hyder uh, Hyderabad state. If the issue came up in UN, they were ready to, you know, uh, 15 countries. America was ready. England was ready. Europe, France was ready. Colombia was ready. They were all ready to recognize Pakistan and, uh, sorry, Usmanistan or Hyderabad state and support it. Imagine what would have happened if there was no police action or the Operation Polo on 17th of September. It started on 13th September, ended on 16th September, Nizam surrendered on 17th September. So 17th September 1948 is liberation of Hyderabad. Imagine there was no Operation Polo. The resolution would have uh, gone to the UN. 15 countries were ready to recognize. America was willing to exert its influence and make more countries fall in line. Only Russia, Ukraine and Georgia were not willing to sign. In those days, they were separate countries. Later, the Soviet Federation was formed. Though the Soviet Federation was already there, they were recognized as separate countries. The point I am saying is not just about Radhakar atrocities, but they were using legal means, international forces, international you know, uh, systems in place. They were using the both parties. The Sham Sundar and B.S. Venkat Rao, they went all the way and they pleaded in the UN to keep Hyderabad separate, to keep Hyderabad independent. This is very much like Periyar, Ram Swami Periyar in Tamil Nadu, wailing and wallowing that British should not leave India so that Tamil Nadu would be saved. You leave, make Tamil Nadu independent. Make a Dravidasthan and leave. So Periyar did it in Tamil Nadu. Shamsundar and Venkatrao did it. Uh, Venkatrao was a minister in Nizam's government. They did it in Hyderabad. They went up to UN. The first condition imposed by Sardar Patel was, if you want to surrender, the first thing, take back the resolution in UN. Nizam complied. Had it not been for Sardar Patel, Hyderabad would have gone to UN. This story must be told. This story must be passed on to our next generations. The next generations must know the story of Hyderabad. How Hyderabad? Right in the belly of this country, there was an ulcer called Hyderabad. It wanted to stay independent. Of course, Kochi also wanted to stay independent. They said, we have a port, we, want, we can trade with the rest of the world, so we stay independent. The Diwan of Kochi, C.P. Ramaswamy Iyengar, he was attacked. So Kochi fell in line and it joined the Indian Union. There was Bhopal. They wanted to stay separate. They were forced and they acceded. Manipur did not want. The king wanted to join. His ministers refused to join. The king signed uh, an instrument of accession. And later on Manipur merged with India. Tripura, the king wanted to join. King Virendra, King uh, his name is Vikramadeva Burma. Vikramadeva Burma on his deathbed, he called his wife and son and told them, don't go by the suggestions given by other people, join Indian Union because we have the same dharma. One of the Shakti Peeps, the Bala Tripura Sundari stays in Tripura. The rest of the 51 are in India. So we have to join Indian Union. These were his last words. And Tripura joined Indian Union. Bhopal joined Indian Union. One state, Umarkot, Amarko, Amarkot, the name of the state is Amarkot. It was a Hindu dominated state led by a Hindu Raja. They opted for Pakistan. The moment they joined Pakistan, the name of Amarkot was changed to Umarkot. The Raja was provided with an honorary MP position. 
But what about the subjects, the ordinary people? So the story of Hyderabad is a story of the rest of the country. It is the story of every province, every district of this country. The demographic changes that are being brought in UP, Western UP particularly, Mathura, Kairana, Shamli, are frightening. Today, Durga Puja cannot be performed in West Bengal's border districts like Dinajpur, Chabbis Paragana, Purulia, Swan and so forth. New Jalpaiguri for that matter. South Salmara district of Assam has 98% Bangladeshi population. People of Bangladeshi origin. South Salmara. It is a newly carved out district, especially for the Bangladeshi immigrants. 98%. Barpeta district, which is the Leela Bhumi of Srimanta Shankara Deva, the Mahapurusha who propagated Vaishnava Dharma in Assam, is 78% Muslim. The Dubri district is 80%. The Karim Ganj, Haila Kandi in Assam, they are all Muslim majority districts. There are 20, out of the 29 districts in Assam, 19 are Muslim majority, more than 50%. It is a miracle that Himanta Bishwa Sharma is able to win and form a government. So the demographic disbalance that Nizam wanted to inflict on Hyderabad is happening everywhere in this country and it is time that the Indian society wakes up, understands the game and then remedies the situation through aware citizens. Prabuddha Bharat, what we need is Prabuddha Bharat. So thank you very much Prabuddha Bharat for giving me this opportunity. Dhaniwaad. Hyderabad Vimochane, Rajakara Daurjanya Matto, Nijamana Duradalitada Kuritu, Aiti Hasika, Melikan Nahaki, Namelara Manamutuva Hage, Upanyasa Nidida, Shri Raka Sudakarji, Ivarike, Dhaniwaadagalu, Iga Savikarinda Prashnegalu, Asakta Sabikaru, Nera Matu, Sankship Tavagi, Prashnegalana, Kelebekagi Vinans Taidene. What are your views about the substantial population of that particular community and the exponential growth in this nation? And about their hardcore destructive ideologies as well? Uh, there's no need for iteration and reiteration. We all know it. And demographic imbalance is a need of our, how we do it and how we should remedy this situation is very important. And uh, their history, their story, and how they have perpetrated atrocities is very well known. So there is no need for a separate view on, my view on that. I have already explained in my you know, presentation that I have made. But I think one important thing is Demography is the name of the game. So Hindus must realize the importance of this demography. The Hindu society, which has the responsibility of uh, uh, keeping this nation afloat, has to realize its role and discharge its responsibilities accordingly. This is my view. Some books are available. I think uh, you can actually get them via Amazon. Bharati Vidya Bhavan has published a book called End of an Era, written by Kanayalal Maniklal Munshi, who was the Indian resident during the time of Hyderabad's liberation. Uh, he was the one who actually managed the surrender of Nizam. So his account is a first person account, and you must all read that book. On the internet, there is a book called Police Action in Hyderabad, written by two brothers, Vande Matram Ramchandra Rao, Vande Matram Virabhadra Rao. Sorry, Vavilala Virabhadra Rao. His name is Vavilala Ramchandra Rao, Vavilala Virabhadra Rao. But uh, like Chandrasekhar Raja, this uh, uh, Ramchandra Rao, he shouted Vande Matram and he was arrested and the police jawans bet him. Every time he was thrashed, he shouted Vande Matram like Chandrasekhar Raja. So he is the Chandrasekhar of Hyder ha Azad of Hyderabad. Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, when he came to know about Vande Matra and Ramchandra Rao's uh, you know, bravery, he sent it the mala that he was wearing, he sent that mala. 
and he said go and give it to him and tell him that from today onwards he should call himself vande mataram ramchandra rao so vande mataram ramchandra rao till his death he died at the age of 78 he kept that garland totally dried up flowers but the garland was very much there in the devata sthanam of his house so vande mataram ramchandra rao and his brother babilala ramchandra rao he founded an organization called hindu swayam sevak sang in 1946 both of them have written a book called the police action in hyderabad it is available uh, in english and it is available as a pdf in the on the internet so you 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 can read this book and there's lot of work on uh, sir you want to ask something yeah yeah please namaste i am anand uh, 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 i'm thank you thank you uh, from bottom of heart uh, by letting us with the facts and the figures uh, you are provided and the reawakening us uh, so i want to know whether all the things what you have told are available on net or uh, on the any media or cd something like that or a book one thing and secondly what would be in your view what would be the guidelines to counter this all uh, present uh, rajakars and uh, their uh, propaganda and all thank you uh, firstly they have written either in kannada the independent the freedom fighters of karnataka have written in kannada language and the freedom fighters of maharashtra have written in marathi language in marathi there are hundreds of books written by the freedom fighters those who were subjected to atrocities and those who fought the nizam for example setu madhav pagdi ji you were mentioning about setu madhav pagdi ji his atmakatha is uh, all about the atrocities of razakars it is in marathi the book is available you have to go to marathwada region to buy that and lot of literature is written in telugu in english nationalistic literature is very scarce that is the biggest problem the on, the two books that i mentioned are the only ones available there is one more book but the copies of which are not available uh, hyderabad from uh, vande mataram to janaganamana written by vh deshai but the book is not available in the market now we have been trying to get a copy of that book but the book is not available there is one book written in hindi by khanderao kulkarni ji khanderao kulkarni ji was the principal of keshav memorial school in hyderabad a school run by arya samaj and uh, the story of keshav memorial in itself is a very great story uh, so khanderao kulkarni ji in 1972 on the occasion of silver jubilee of hyder india's independence he went to different parts of telang you know um, erstwhile hyderabad state and met the freedom fighters and wrote their story so that book is available in hindi it is available in hindi the translation is also available in english it is available on hindu e shop so i think these are the books that uh, one can get some resource internet of course is dominated by anti indian thought because we are waking up they have been at it for last 19 years 19 19 20 uh, last 22 years so our resources are not there as far as uh, the uh, the other question that you have said i think these things cannot be discussed in a public forum like this hi sir uh, what mr raka sudhakar rao ji has been revealing with all the summary is just and in a concise thing that is whether that is available on net or or book or cd that is what i am i mean yeah. because getting that all marathi kannada english hindi things getting them connecting and uh, putting uh, joining the dots instead uh, sudhakar ji has provided us with plenty much of the uh, concise data so you, you are may, forcing me to actually do yeah, self yeah. advertisement i have done three videos each running into one hour one i did with uh, jaipur dialogues mr sanjay uh, dikshit ji this is in hindi and then i did two interviews in english one is for, uh, three interviews in english one two for swarajya sharana sharana joshi has interviewed me on this uh, radakar atrocities and all. it is available on swarajya mags uh, web uh, you know um, youtube channel and there was one more interview by a girl called prerana tiruvai party she has interviewed me on the same subject so they are available on you can swarajya mag radakar raka sudhakar you will get them and another interview i did for a lady in jambia her name is gayatri ji 
Gayatri ji has recently on September 16th, she has done an interview. It uh, spanned for 40 minutes and that also has got sufficient information about uh, Radhakar. These four, of course, they are currently available. But as I said, the biggest problem is you don't have Hindi or English speakers on this subject. People speak on Telugu, in Telugu, people speak in Marathi. Marathwada celebrates 17th September nine, uh, uh, every year as Hi Marathwada uh, Liberation Day. And uh, the Hyderabad Karnataka celebrates it as uh, Liberation Day. Telangana doesn't celebrate, but the literature is not being created. So our task is to create literature and then sensitize the people of the present generation. Good evening, sir. Uh, so then the second organization is the RSS. So do you think these two are doing enough to protect the Hindus and to take care of the things that are happening? Uh, Hindu society, if it refuses to protect itself, who can save it? That is the biggest problem today. Hindu society, uh, yesterday I went to one of my friend's house for uh, dinner. There is a sword in his house. How many Hindu houses who build at great cost have a lati at home? You have ab you know, abdicated the responsibility of protecting yourselves to the police, outsourced your protection to the police. So this is uh, something that Hindu society must seriously ponder over. There was no RSS when uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji fought uh, the Mughals. So it is not the job of RSS or any other organization to protect the Hindu society. Hindu society is not doing enough to protect itself. This is my take on this. Yes, provided the organizer is allowed. Yeah. Uh, Namaskaram Sudhar, uh, Sudhakar. My question to you is how they are unapologetic in whatever they do. You, you just uh, said about some 10 children, right? But how, what we do, whoever it may be, it's like, don't touch. The best example what I like I would like to give is, during the first Indian war, uh, the Gori was uh, sitting in front of Prithviraj Chavan saying that, I mean, without any weapons and all, uh, Prithviraj Chavan claimed that, no, I won't kill anyone without the, uh, who is unarmed. But when we go to the same instance in Kurukshetra, uh, Bhishmacharya was uh, without any arms, Krishna made to kill him because he was with Adharma. Even Guru Dronacharya, even he was made to kill because we, uh, he was with Adharma. And I mean after like from 5, 6, 7 dead years, we are into just that Ahimsa Paramo Dharma and we have forgotten this uh, Dharma Ahimsa Tatayvacha. So how to get back into uh, that timing or like that mindset for uh, even like uh, so that uh, Hindu Dharma may be fresh for another 10,000 lakhs of years. Thank you. History of this country, history of the world for that matter. India is the only country, Bharat is the only country in the world that has successfully resisted the Islamic invasion. This is something we forget. Indian story is a story, India's history is a story of valor, sacrifice, fight, never give up. Somehow we have forgotten that. It took 50 years to subdue Iran. It took rest, less than 50 years to subdue the whole of Iraq. Afghanistan was subdued in a matter of 100 years. They came to Sindh in 712 AD. And the next attack was 300 years later. And there was this story, there is this story of Bahraich where all the you know invaders were killed. There is the story of history, historical story of uh, Bakhtiar Khilji and one lakh of his army put to being put to death in Assam uh, on the banks of Brahmaputra. Unfortunately, we are not told these stories. The stories of valor, the stories that instill confidence, are not being told. So this morning, one of my friend. Uh, uh, with whom I had my lunch, he told me the story of uh, Samartha Ramdas. The people were afraid of Afghans because they were six-footers and all these Maulas and others were, you know, puny when compared to those uh, Afghans. So, Samartha Swami Ramdas uh, started installing the statues of 
Lord Hanuman, 1100 such temples he has constructed. So through these temples, he invoke, you know, he inculcated the habit of physical fitness, and then he built self confidence. So I think that we need very much. See this shloka of uh, Dharma Himsa Tathai Bacha. That's not uh, a complete shloka. Unfortunately, even those who are quoting the shloka, they are not. Those who are quoting the Dharma Himsa Tathai Bacha, the, the full shloka is not being quoted. I do not know it. I do not. I have not memorized it. But the whole shloka is much longer. The Hindu society has to, in, you know, recall its martial capabilities. It has to recall and uh, it has to understand that it, it is not a software generation, but it is a historically we are hardware. The Muslims took, you know, the Muslim invaders took nearly 500 years to reach Delhi. In 500 years, whole of Europe, whole of Africa, North Africa, and whole of uh, the Asia were subjugated by the, you know, Islamic forces. But it took 500 years for them to reach Delhi. And after reaching Delhi, they could not sustain themselves for more than 400 years. The story that is told in our textbooks is the Britishers have taken over the mantle from the Mughals. But they have never fought a war with Mughals. They fought a war with Mysore. They fought a war with Marathas. They fought a war with Sikhs. They fought a war with Gurkhas. Anglo, you will find Anglo-Sikh wars, Anglo-Mysore wars, Anglo, you know, um, Gurkha wars, Anglo uh, Maratha wars, but never a war with Mughals. So this story needs to be told, and let us not depend on the textbooks. We should keep talking to our youth. We should start telling the stories of valor. How many of us know the story of uh, Zorawar Singh and Fateh Singh? Very few of us, those who go to Sangha or Shakhas, they know the story of Zorawar Singh and Fateh Singh, but not many of us know the story of Zorawar Singh and Fateh Singh. The two sons of Guru Gobind Singh who have preferred death to conversion. How many of us know the story of Bhai Satidas and Bhai Matidas? One. Bhai Matidas and Satidas, they perished along with Guru Tegh Bahadur. They were actually cut into two pieces vertically for refusing to accept Islam. So this culture needs to be re-inculcated in the society. Not, it, it cannot happen through the textbooks, but it can happen only through the you know, community efforts. We have preserved the story of Shivaji. Textbooks don't tell the story of Shivaji. We have handed it over from generation to generation. So that kind of effort is needed. So Storytelling, telling the story of uh, fight against Razakars, how we won against Razakars, story of how Marathas defeated uh, Aurangzeb, how Rajputs have bettered the Mughals, how a small kingdom like Chatrasal, how he defeated. In Assam, there is a stone, of course Vilasji would know, on the banks of Brahmaputra, sorry for being slightly longer. The name of that uh, boulder is Kanai Barahi Bua Hila Lake. The meaning is a fisherman named Kanai used to angle there and then catch fish. For generations it was used for catching fish for hundreds of years. On the same boulder a small script was, inscription was there, a two sentence inscription was written. You know what this inscription was? Shake Turaga Yugmesha Madhumasa Trayodashe Kamarupam Samagacha Turushkaha Chayamayu. The last two words you would understand. Turushkaha have come, they have become Kshayaha. Not one of them you know, um, was alive to tell the story. This was written by Maharaja Pruthu, who ruled Kamarupa kingdom, to, which is today's Assam. Uh, in the 10th century, one lakh soldiers of Bhaktiar Khilji were done to death, put to death. And that victory was written on that bowler. It must be a historical monument for this country where an invader was put to death so mercilessly and so he was decimated so completely. And now what it is called? It is called as a boulder on which a kanai used to sit and then catch fish. So when we forget our own history, what who can save us? So this story must be told. 
the story of India's successes, our victories, how we protected our, ourselves. There is a fire temple of Hindus in Baku, in the Central Asia. How many of us know? There is a temple of Ashamai in Kabul, Afghanistan. There is no Hindu in Kabul, but the flame in that temple, Ashamai temple, has been flickering and alive for the last 2,000 years. Kabul has gone. Afghanistan is gone. The Hindus have perished. But the Ashamai temple, the Talibans have tried to bomb it four times. But the Ashamai temple and the Deepam there, the, the, the Jyoti there, is still flickering. The UNESCO is now putting oil into those pramidas and then, you know, those containers and the earthen lamps and then burning it. UNESCO and the, the it's a heritage site in uh, Afghanistan. So these stories of, uh, you know, inspiration must be told. The stories like uh, Ashamai temple in Afghanistan's Kabul. The flame is flickering for the past 2000 years uninterrupted. Kingdoms have come and gone. Invaders have come and gone. The Hindus have left. But the flame is still flickering in Afghanistan. You can type Ashama and see in Google for it. The photographs are available. Wherever Afghan Hindus have gone in the world, be it US or UK, they have constructed temples of Ashamai. If you type Ashamai, there is every chance that you would get an Ashamai temple of Florida or Texas. You have to search a little while to know the Afghan uh, no, Ashamai temple, the original temple. Thank you so much.